In just five minutes, let's learn how to make concurrent Web3 RPC calls with Python. So today, as I was browsing the Ethereum Python Discord, I came across a conversation in which somebody that was actually using Transdoc RPC nodes was trying to achieve a pretty interesting data task. So essentially what he was trying to do was loop through a large range of blocks, and for each block that he loops through and iterates through, he wanted to use that block number as a parameter in a smart contract method call. And his issue was that it was taking too long, it was too slow. So after we talked about it, we realized what the issue is. And the issue was Python itself. So if you didn't know, Python as well as Web3PY are largely synchronous. This means that operations are essentially processed sequentially, one after the other until the script ends. So for example, if you're making thousands of RPC requests, in this case, looping through different block numbers to be used as parameters in smart contract calls, then each of those calls that you're making will go one, wait till it completes, the next one, wait till it completes, and so on. What this means is that for use cases like this, any use case where you need to make a large amount of specific Web3 RPC calls, Python can get extremely slow very quickly. So how do we loop through or make a very large amount of Web3 requests without it taking a lot of time? Now, of course, there are a few different ways of doing this, but in today's video, what we're gonna do is use a combination of asynchronous functions and multi-threaded processing to achieve concurrent RPC calls and significantly cut down the amount of time that it takes to make these large amounts of typically sequential RPC calls. So in just five minutes, let's utilize asynchronous and multi-threaded Python programming to send concurrent Web3 RPC requests. In this specific case, what we're going to do is loop through 500 blocks, and for each block, get the balance of an address at that specific point in time. So first, before we get started, we'll need to import a few base libraries. We're going to import asyncio, concurrent.futures, web3, and time. Okay, so now we have asyncio, we have concurrent.futures, and from concurrent.futures, we're going to import thread pool executor. We have web3, and we have time. So let's start by defining just our base web3 object. We'll just name this web3. And in this case, we're gonna use an HTTP connection. And then here, we'll be able to throw in our RPC URL. So remember, our goal here is to basically find the balance of an address at points in the past. This is what we call historical states. So to do this, we'll need an archival node. So we can head over to Chainstack. I'll go into my test three project. I'll click get started. In this case, I will do Ethereum, Ethereum mainnet, and next. We can choose advanced and choose archive as a mode. And this will be deployed in North Virginia on AWS. Then we can click on join network. And then we'll head into here and we'll grab our endpoint. Now, before we continue, I think it's also important to highlight another factor here that impacts the speed at which this process will go. This is node latency. So before we do anything, we'll wanna make sure that this node is fast enough for us in this case. I'm gonna head over to the node lookup tool that I made a few years ago. I will paste in that endpoint and click lookup. So as you can see, the latency of this node is about 14 milliseconds from US East, which is about where we're calling it from. So when we're doing this process, the latency of the node shouldn't get in the way at all, which means it will be able to conduct a clean test of the amount of time that it takes to get all of these results. Okay, so now let's define a few additional base variables. We can start with address. This will be the address of the account that we're gonna be pulling the balance for. We can define the start block. This will be the most recent block. And we can define the end block, which will just be the start block minus 500. So now we can go ahead and define our main function for actually getting the balance of the address itself. We're going to call this get balance block. The parameter that it will take will be the block number. So let's go ahead and get the balance itself. We'll call web3.eth.getBalance, pass in the address, and define the block identifier. And then we can go ahead and print this out. Okay, so now that we have that function, we're going to define our main asynchronous function that will call thread pull executor, which will call the function for every block in the range that we've defined. So we can use async, we can just call this main, and we'll say with thread pull executor. And then here we can define our maximum number of workers. In this case, I'll leave this to 10, and then as executor. And then we can open up a list in here. You can just call this whatever you want. I'll just call it tasks in this case. And here we can call a variable that we'll define below. And this will be a variable called loop. Then on loop, we can call run in executor. And here we can pass executor, then the function that we defined above, as well as the parameter that it takes. And right here, we can go ahead and actually loop through the blocks. We can do for block num in range, in the start block, and the end block. And then we'll want this in descending order. And finally, just to close it off, we can throw in a wait, syncio.gather, and then pass in our list there. Okay, perfect. So now we can go ahead and actually define the loop variable that we used above. So we can call this loop. It was just a syncio.get event loop. 
Again, there are different ways to achieve what we're doing right now, but this will be a pretty quick and easy way to do so. Okay, so what we've done so far is that we've imported our variables, we've defined the RPC node itself, defined some base variables, created our get balance at block function, which just gets the balance of the address at the block number in the range that we're looping through. And then of course, to find our main function, which uses thread pool executor to run get balance at block concurrently through the range of blocks that we defined above in the base variables. Now under our loop definition, we're also going to start a clock here. Now you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I'm going to do this just for demonstration purposes to understand how long it takes for this entire process to happen. So we can name this start time dot time, and then we actually run the tasks itself. So we can do loop dot run until complete. Then we can print out how much time it took. So perfect. Now we have our complete script so we can go ahead and run it and see what it does. So as we can see, it's going through everything here. It's doing it pretty quickly. And there we go. It took about five seconds to go through 500 blocks and get the balance of this address at each of those block numbers. So now that we know that this took about five seconds and worked pretty quickly, pretty well, let's go ahead and compare this with the standard way of processing requests like this just through a normal loop on Python. Okay, so we have a very similar script here and said this uses no asynchronous or multi-threaded processing. It's just vanilla standard Python. So let's see how it performs. And as you can see, it's gone ahead and started. And there we go, it took about 13 seconds to run. This time it took over double the amount of time because it didn't implement concurrent processing. Okay, so what I also wanna do now is we're gonna actually move from Python and show you what it looks like to do this in JavaScript. So we're just gonna use standard asynchronous functions on JavaScript and specifically, we're gonna process this through just a promise.all method. So let's run this and see how long this takes compared to the last two scripts. And as you can see, it was pretty fast, about three seconds. So this is the fastest, three seconds. The multi-threaded Python version was about five seconds and the standard vanilla Python version with just a normal loop was 13 seconds. So while not applicable to every use case in the world, cases that do make requests of this nature, in a lot of cases will require either using JavaScript or using this type of processing on Python. And if you'd like to learn how I launched a Chainstack Elastic node in just a few seconds, you can also learn more about that with the link below. If you'd like to dive into more Biotest building videos, that will also be linked below.